And we're back. All right, what's up? And welcome to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. We've got the SCAR 18 with us today. This is one of the most powerful, most desirable gaming laptops that you can get this year. And it might be the laptop I end up choosing. Um, for myself as a long-term permanent keeper. It's one of the top laptops in contention right now for me. Um, so this laptop has crazy high specs and I'm really excited about it. It's This thing is going to be uh, a great performer overall. It's got uh, some big improvements over the Strix G18 that I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna break down all the differences between the Strix G18 and the SCAR18 because a lot of people have questions on that. Um, we're going to go over all of the specs included in this $38.99 laptop. It's a pricey laptop, but it basically is pretty much the best that you can get or close to it, right up butting up against the very, very best. There's a few laptops that have a little more power, uh, like the MSI GT77 or maybe a liquid cooled XMG Neo 16 or 17, but this thing is pretty much like 95% as powerful as those ones. And those basically have overclocked RTX 4090s. So uh, anyway, all right. So this, I want to mention was, uh, this this was borrowed to me or lent to me by Lance, who is one of the subscribers on the channel. And uh, he just, he said, hey, I've got a SCAR 18. I'm in Houston. You want to meet up? And we met up and he's going to let me, he just let me borrow the SCAR 18 for a few days. And so we're going to be doing a live unboxing today. And we might even do some benchmarking today because I've managed to get a bunch of things installed on it already. And it's pretty much ready to go for benchmarks. But we're going to focus on everything we do in a live unboxing first. Um, but probably benchmarks tomorrow just because... If I do the benchmarks plus the live unboxing, it's probably going to be like, you know, five hour live stream. So it's just a little too long to actually to, to do that. So today we're going to focus on the unboxing and maybe a few benchmarks. So maybe like three or four games. We'll have to see. Not all of them. We're obviously going to do Cinebench R23 today. We're going to do Time Spy. We're going to do uh, a flex test. We're going to take the bottom of the laptop off and check out the internals. We're going to do a speaker test. We're going to do a display test. Um, and I'm going to show you side by side the Strix G18 and the SCAR18 so you can see what they look like and see that they actually have a different chassis, different keyboard backlighting. Um, we're going to, I can show you the speakers side by side because um, the speakers are, are massively upgraded in the SCAR18, not massively, but noticeably upgraded in the SCAR18. And then, of course, we've got the RTX 4090 in this guy, which you can't get with the, the Strix G18. So the 4090 is going to be more powerful. It's going to have more juice to it. Uh, but in terms of thermals, it's almost exactly the same. So checking out chat here. Kalen says, so awesome, one of your viewers. Uh, Hood Hustler says, crazy high specs, cool temps, and high clocks. That's the goal. We're going to see. We're going to see today. All right, so this is going to be the first RTX 4090 that I'm going to be testing. So that's going to be really interesting Interesting to see how it does, especially versus the RTX 4080. Now, this is a noticeable price bump above the Strix G18. Let's go ahead and take a, a closer look at the specs before we unbox this bad boy. All right, so this is my gaming laptop list of all laptops available for the RTX 4000 series. I'll be adding RTX 3000 series deals at the top of the list soon, uh, probably later this week or maybe early next week. That's kind of my goal is to incorporate that. It's uh, still collecting data on all the RTX 4000 series laptops right now, but there's benchmark data on here. There's links on where you can buy each of these laptops. Um, so the Asus SCAR 18, do, do, do. Here it is. All right. So currently, uh, the only place to buy this is Newegg. At least that's the only link that we have. It's out of stock. It is uh, $38.99. We've got an i9-13980HX, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 6E, Windows 11. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing's got a 500 nits QHD 240 hertz display. One downside of this laptop is the, the memory speed is not as fast. It's DDR5 4800, and some of the laptops this year, a lot of them are coming with 5600 megahertz. So that's a little bit uh, on the downside or like one of the main drawbacks of this machine. 
Um, in addition, the other main drawback of this machine versus something like the GT77 or XMG Neo, uh, or maybe the Alienware M18 we'll have to see, is that those machines kind of basically have a built-in overclock that pushes the GPU a little bit beyond what this thing can do, as far as I can tell. So, um, yeah, that's the main differences between this one and I think some of the other competition, but what basically Asus has done is they've prioritized thermals over trying to eke every little bit of performance out of it. And you're still gonna get 95% probably the performance of something like the GT77, but the extra five, 10% of performance may be left on the table because of that design choice. But in terms of long-term reliability, I'm guessing the SCAR series will be maybe a little bit more reliable because of their design choice. But it's, it's hard to say until you're like five years later and you look back at the which laptops failed more often or not. So um, anyway, that's basically Asus's design aesthetic and, and everything. So. All right, so uh, if we can chat, try to focus the questions primarily around the SCAR 18, and we're gonna feel free to ask any questions, especially related to the SCAR series. Um, without further ado, let's get the unboxing started. Mm. All right, checking chat. Will I test the SCAR 164090? I do hope so. I, I ordered one and it hasn't come in yet. So it's been back ordered. It got delayed. All right. Will it have features that were missing on the Strix like a fingerprint reader or face recognition? I don't believe so. This does not have Windows Hello or a fingerprint sensor as far as I know. But you got a number pad, so it's quick to log in with a pin. It's just like doo -doo -doo, and you're in. But still, okay. Don't get on. So this is the box. Doo -doo -doo. And we'll go all the way around the box. Do do do. Kind of a cool design on the back, kind of like a comic book uh, page. Not much on that side, but um, all right. Okay, so let's see here. Which side is the laptop on? Okay. Laptop's on this side. And let's switch the camera angle over to our secondary angle. All right. Doo, doo, doo. Shaboom. Okay. So we put the plastic back on there after it was, like I said, this is a, a a borrowed unit from a subscriber. So he, he turned it on and got the BIOS updated, Windows updated, and last night I also installed some games. So it's gonna have uh, a lot of things on it already. So it's a little bit faster going through this today. All right, so here's the laptop. The box is very similar to the Strix G18. I'll put the laptop there for a moment. Now, when we open this guy up, you'll notice a power brick, right? So we've got the same power brick uh, as the Strix G18, and it's a 330 watt, and it is smaller than the Alienware power brick, but not as small as the Razer. The Razer was like about half this size. So it's, uh, it's a nice power brick size overall, better than some, but not as good as others. So. It's a nice, it's a middle ground. I wish it was a bit smaller. Um, okay, so there's that. Now inside the box, we do have an exchangeable cab. This is one of the things that's different about the SCAR series versus the Strix G18. This exchangeable cab is, uh, we'll show you on the laptop here in a moment, but you can basically swap out the corner piece, all right? All right, so we have our register your laptop for accidental damage protection. Ooh, okay, so you get liquid spills, electrical surges, and accidental drop coverage. Ooh. Extended warranty, 90 days. I don't know exactly 
Maybe if you you get an extra 90 days if you register it, I'm not sure. But that's pretty cool, the fact that they're even offering accidental drop protection out of the box. That's something that the other laptops so far this year did not include. So um, here's the basic warranty card. This looks like the same one. Uh, at least as far as I know, the Strix G18 did not have that inside the box. So that is different. Um, okay, so warranty applies for 24 months. 24M means 24 months. It's defined on the label in the back of the product. Okay, so let me see the, let's take this out, out and then let's see what it says on the back of the product. Okay, so uh, notice there's a bit of a nice, let me turn this so you can see. Okay. All right, so right here we've got uh, stats on it, 240 hertz, ultra high refresh rate, 500 nits brightness, 100% DCI-P3 uh, color, gamma color, color gamut coverage, NVIDIA Advanced Optimus, 15 degrees lower on CPU and GPU temps because of the liquid metal uh, pure gallium. Some of the other manufacturers, I believe Alienware is using a similar uh, CPU paste. It's not really a paste, it's liquid metal, right? Uh, full surround vents, so for additional uh, cooling, they remove the ports on the back of the SCAR. You can see there's no ports here. It's all ventilation this year. And that's supposed to increase the airflow. Uh, and they installed a third fan as well, which is also helps supposed to keep the center of the chassis uh, cooler, especially to the touch, like the keyboard itself uh, won't heat up as much when you're using the laptop even under heavy load. Um, they also have zero dB truly silent mode. So there you go. So if you wanna have a laptop that has no fan noise or whatever, that's, that's an option right there. So uh, pretty cool sticker. Um, now, I mean, it's a sticker. I mean, I guess that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Trying to see. So this says 12M. So this is a 12 month warranty on this product, okay? Beautiful. All right, so let's see here. Let's get the cab. Let's try exchanging this cab. Let's put this, so there is a keyboard. There is a keyboard cover. We'll take that off for a second. I'm gonna set this laptop down for a moment and I'm gonna put the box down. All right. Now, I really want to take this sticker off. I hope that's okay, Lance. <laughs> okay. So I took the sticker off. I hope that's okay. <laughs> He's going to be so mad at me now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do this exchangeable cap. All right, so let me zoom in a little bit. So here's the, the place of plastic that you can swap in and out. So it's very, oh, is it, it looks like it's magnetic. Two magnets right there, let's see. Can I just lift this up? I can. So it's not that different. I kind of wish they would give you like more designs, like a white one or like a clear, I mean, this is basically clear and dark gray, which I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna be hard to notice the difference between those two. <laughs> so it's a cool idea, but I, it's, yeah, it's more of a gimmicky thing than anything. Uh, yeah, it's not like it's gonna make it, if anything, it's almost like, unless they actually give you more color options here, like what if you can make it blue or red or whatever you wanted, um, then it would be pretty sick. But as it is right now, I would almost rather have a laptop that didn't have this piece because it's just something that can fall off of the laptop, which is, is never a good thing. Um, okay. I don't think it will fall off the laptop, but it might. And you, then if you don't notice it and then you're like, wait, where did my piece go? <laughs> it could be pretty bad. All right, so uh, let me grab the Strix. Okay. 
So, as you can see, the Strix and the Scar are exactly the same chassis design. Um, so, do you see how this, do you see how the flow of this is like, it's basically exactly the same? But when I, when I lift this up, you'll see that it's actually different colors. I was looking at this side by side last night and uh, notice how the scar is black, the Strix is gray. All right, so let me move this light a little bit so you can see this a little better. But uh, so it's gray here on the Strix, black on the scar. Very minor, not a really a big deal, but it's, it's different. Okay. Derek says the only difference between our, the Strix and the Scar is RGB stuff. That's not true. There is more differences, but they are more minor. They're not major. So we're going to go over all the differences uh, during today's live stream. Um, but in brief, there is big RGB changes to the chassis, better speakers on the Scar 18. Uh, RTX 4090 option, which gives the SCAR more VRAM and a, just a more powerful GPU, which is going to make it more future-proof than the Strix G18. Um, and then, yeah, and then we have the different chassis color, being the SCAR being black focused. And I'll show you on, on when we open this up here too. You can see the SCAR is, uh, again, black. Black on the interior on the keyboard deck, and the Strix is gray on the keyboard deck. Now, if I fire these up, just go ahead and get them fired up. Um, let me see if I can zoom in here on the keyboard. So basically, Look at the look at how the the Strix G18 keyboard fills in the RGB lighting. I'm trying to see if there's a difference. And I want to make sure that it, this is also um, the full keyboard backlight. Yep, that's as bright as it gets. All right, and then if I move and put the the scar here in its place. Maybe I'm maybe I'm actually crazy. I, I don't know. I thought the keyboard backlight on the scar was brighter. But it might actually be the same exact keyboard. It, it, I think it's I feel like it's the same I feel like it's the same keyboard backlight. I thought it was brighter on the scar. That was my first impression. But uh, actually, I think it's, it's, I don't know. It's so similar. But I, I also think, I thought that this was just a little brighter on the scar, but I, I could be wrong. All right, so. Now the RGB implementation, let's take a look at that. So if you look right here, you can see we have the RGB lights on the SCAR. It's actually a really nice light bar here on the SCAR. And then we've got a light up RGB logo here on the SCAR and there's just nothing. This is just a, a metal imprint on the Strix G18 and no RGB light bar along the back here. Um, so, let's see here. So, so yeah, overall, 
Uh, very minimal differences there. Oh, there's another difference too. Let me show you um, front, front head on here. Let me just get logged into these laptops. All right. Notice how different the keyboard deck and the overall feel of the machine looks. So, right here, there is just a line going across. Um, I'm probably going to need to get a light so you can see the etching. You see this line right here? And then this is also translucent. I can see down into the, the motherboard. It's not translucent back here. The touchpad is the same size on both of them, um, but this is translucent. On the Strix, they have a, I think it says Republic of Gamers or something that says R, like ROG or something right here. And there's a, a keyboard deck design. Um, and this is not transparent at all along the deck. So, that's another design difference between the Strix and the, and the SCAR. And the other, another major difference is going to be the speakers. And let me try to demonstrate the speakers for you guys because it's a noticeable improvement on the SCAR. Um, So let me pull up some music. Oh, we're gonna have to get connected here. One second, everyone. Uh, I can't use this. I was gonna change. I was gonna use a song, that, uh, but I can't use that one because of copyright. So I'm gonna switch the song to a different one. Okay. But to do that, I'm gonna have to log into Artlist. So gotta get logged in on both machines. Give me one second, and we'll be able to do the sound test. Side by side. Okay. All right, so both of them are at max volume. I'm going to go ahead and give them a little separation here. So I'm going to do uh, the Strix G18 first and then the SCAR, all right? And I'm going to hold it like a foot in front of the, the laptop, like just right in front of it here, okay? All right. So we have max volume on both, both machines right now. And uh, we'll do one song on the Strix, then one song on the SCAR, one song on the Strix, one song on the SCAR. We'll bounce back and forth for three songs. Are you ready, chat? Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that was uh, first 40 seconds. Let's go ahead and do the scar now. A lot more bass. So to me, just listening in person, I can hear, especially in that song, a lot more bass, like thun like more of a like a full bass feeling, where the Strix has some bass, but the bass is like more minimal, and you're really getting more mids and highs with the Strix. Um, let me see what Bill's Bill sounds like. All right, let's try Bill's Bills. All right, here we go. The first thirty seconds. This is on the Strix now. Here is Bill's Bills on the Scar. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just play... Okay, so that's uh, La La La. And now for the Strix G18. So the way I would equate it is kind of like the scar feels more like a real sound system with a dedicated subwoofer a little more, uh, whereas the Strix G18 almost is more like a decent smartphone speaker. Does it kind of does it make sense? It's a little more tinny, a little more mids and a little more highs, not much bass to it. So yeah, so those are the main differences. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, like RGB lighting. The keyboard backlight appears to be the same. The light-up logo on the back, different chassis design, um, and much better speakers on the SCAR. So we don't need to put the SCAR away. We need to put the Strix away. All right, let me see. Show him. Okay. Is the chassis uh, and lid made of plastic? So the, the lid is metal. Can you hear it? That's a metal lid. Uh, the chassis itself is like this high quality uh, plastic. That's and uh, honestly, like after the after using the uh, after using the blade last night um, in the live stream, it reminded me how much I prefer a, a plastic chassis, just because the heat distribution. The heat distribution is so much better on a plastic chassis than it is on a uh, metal chassis. So. Cool. Was the blade keyboard getting hot yesterday? Uh, during Hogwarts is when I started noticing the wrist rest. It got... It didn't get so uncomfortable that I had to take my hand off, but it's it's so warm that um, 
it would be hard for me to do like extended gaming sessions using the keyboard and mouse personally. I don't like feeling hot and having a hot wrist rest can make me feel hot. If you're a person who tends to feel cold all the time, maybe it'll be great. It'll be like, oh sweet, this feels awesome. Uh, but not me, I, I hate sweating and it, it would definitely make me sweat if I played Apex Legends for three hours with the blade. Uh, that is not necessarily, so back when I had a blade, uh, when I had the Blade Pro, um, what I would run, and sometimes if I wanted to have a cooler wrist rest, I would put it into balance mode with high levels of fans, and that kept the chassis cool enough. Um, but you are sacrificing performance doing that. So if you want a cooler wrist rest with the blade, it's, it is possible to do that. Um, I didn't test that, but I'm pretty confident you'd be able to do that with the Blade 16 and 18. Those Fairlife protein drinks are good. I know, they should sponsor my channel. I drink like two or three of these a day. <laughs> okay, it's time to take the bottom of the chassis off. Let's go. What's my favorite keyboard out of the flagships? Um, well, I really like the, the Lenovo keyboard. It's really excellent, but... Um, Hmm, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I, I, I really like the SCAR keyboard. I haven't got to spend enough time on the the new MSI GT77 series keyboard, but I imagine that's a great keyboard. The Alienware keyboard is great too. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of good keyboards this year. The, the Razer Blade keyboard feels good. It's just the spacing on the left. Like I wish the control key was bigger and I wish the arrow keys were bigger. And I wish there was function keys or maybe a numpad, especially on the 18 inch. Um, probably not the 16 inch, but just the 18 inch. Okay. I need my toolkit. CL said, I just joined the stream. I ordered the scar, but mine had coil wine buzzing and stuttering. Such a nice device besides those issues. So interested to go back and see if I was just unlucky. So uh, my guess is that coil wine is something that you're gonna have to deal with on most SCAR 18 and Strix G18 products. Just the nature of the VRMs that they set up in that product line is just gonna have coil wine. So this is, it's a downside, it sucks, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So. I, I did talk to Asus uh, rep about the coil wine, and he said that they're going to change the BIOS so that uh, the fan profiles basically kick the fan noise on a bit sooner when under a load. Um, and that should help mask the coil noise uh, sound, because I don't notice the coil noise like at all when the fans are going or when I'm playing a game. It's only when I have the fans completely off like if you're, if you're someone that wants a quiet laptop and any kind of noise just bothers you, then yeah, I wouldn't I recommend the Strix G18 or SCAR series, I don't think, to you. Um, but if you're someone who likes to game with fans on high speed and using headphones or whatever, you know, that's when I'm like, it does not matter. <laughs> you know, like you're going to be, you're not even going to no notice the coil line when you're playing because you got headphones on or or whatever. So it's going to be on a person by person basis, but I think most people will like kind of hear it when the games are starting up and the fans haven't ramped up yet. And they'll be like, that's interesting. And then the games get going and they won't even notice it at all. So, um, that's my take on the coil, coil wine right now. And the coil wine would definitely not prevent me from buying it. Okay. So that's just, just to be clear, like that's not a big enough issue for me because I, I usually use headphones when I game or I use the speakers on the system if I'm not using headphones. And th those two things put together means I'll basically will never hear the coil whine almost ever, except when launching a game. That's the only exception. The GPU VRMs, yeah, and the CPU VRMs probably. But, um, but yeah, so that like I said, the Asus is they're they're working on it to try to mask the sound of the coil wine um, better. I'm curious to see what kind of changes they make. But uh, if coil wine, if you basically yeah, like I said, if you want a super quiet laptop, 
I wouldn't recommend the scar. Like I know some people are obsessed with having like almost no fan noise. I mean, generally probably don't get a gaming laptop if you want no fan noise, but um, or be except or or if you want no fan noise, just accept that it's going to be less performance in in super quiet mode. And in that case, I, again, I probably wouldn't recommend the scar to someone like that. If you're going to run it on like zero fan decibel mode at like reduced power limits, I'm not sure if the coil. Actually, I don't know. Maybe the coil noise. Uh, coil whine is just not as pronounced when it's on lower power voltage. We should test because that would be that would be interesting. Because I wouldn't be surprised if the if it's lower voltage, maybe it doesn't make the noise because it's probably only when it's pulling really high wattage that it makes the noise. Okay, one of my lights went out here. There we go. All right, so checking chat again. Uh, Dargan Malcolm asks, did you hear coil whine when you started it or only when gaming? So I only hear the coil whine uh, when loading up a GPU load, like entering a game. And let's say that the temperatures on the CPU and GPU are still low enough that uh, the fans haven't kicked on. And then the result is, you know, you end up with a, a machine that is uh, under heavy load, but it's, everything else is quiet still. And that's when the coil line becomes more pronounced. So. Okay, so we, we do have a pop-up screw on the SCAR-18. It's this one over here. It popped up the chassis, so I'm gonna use this prying tool to get this thing to come apart. Again, if you're looking for some shirts, there's a links in the description into the AM. They have some fantastic shirt designs. Uh, I think 10% off if you use uh, Gizmo Slip in the checkout code or Gizmo Slip Tech in the check. It's in the video description. There's a, there's a code, you can get a discount. And uh, if you do use that code or the link or whatever, I think it does help support the channel like a small percentage comes back to me, but I love their shirts. And if, they, if I link to them, they send me some, so. Uh, yeah, I just love their designs, like authentically. And they've, I've had the shirt for three years and it still looks great. Like the prints are really high quality. As long as you don't wash them and wa uh, wash them and dry them at high heat, they last a long time. Okay, so there it goes. Got the front up. Now we gotta get the sides. I might need to use multiple toothpicks here. Uh, Mena Brothers asks, how much do you think the GE76-3080 with i7 10th gen is worth? Huh, 3080? i7 10th gen? Used or new? If it's used, it's probably like $1,400 or so in that range. Maybe, tw if it's, sorry, if it's used, maybe between twelve dollars to 1400 Somewhere in that range is probably where you're going to be able to sell it. You might be able to sell it to someone who doesn't know what they're doing and you might be able to sell it for like a good chunk more. Um, I'd say on the high end, you might be able to get 1700, low end 1200 if you want to sell it fast. Your Asus 6950 had very audible coil wine, but now it is noiseless. That's true, maybe the coil wine will go away with time and usage. But that's a risk that you're gonna have to be willing to take if you, uh, you know, if you're gonna want to spend almost four thousand dollars on a laptop without, you know, not including tax. A lot of people don't want to take that kind of risk. Okay, I've got almost all the sides up. There are basically plastic clips all, of, all across this whole laptop. So it's a bit tricky getting this thing 
to come up. You don't want to damage the plastic, right? So at least this year, we don't have any uh, RGB strips attached to the motherboard. Watcha. Oh, let's change the camera angle. All right, and voila. So there's the internals. Let's break down what we got going on inside this machine. All right. So we have a 90 watt hour battery here. I wish this was a 100 watt hour. There's almost no excuse in my opinion why Asus can't put a 100 watt hour in here. It is clearly big enough. Um, there's big enough space at least. And I wish they had included one more M.2 SSD slot as well because you can see there's like plenty of room for them to install another SSD on the motherboard on at least one of these two sides. You could probably do four in here if they were cramming it in. Um, all right, and uh, here is the RAM. Let's see here. I am looking for the battery release. Looks like it's underneath there. I don't like that idea. Um, I'm not gonna take the battery out. I'm not gonna take this RAM out, but I'll try to hold the laptop so you can see the RAM. All right, can you see the, the RAM stats there? So it's a, uh, DDR5 SODIMM says 4800. It's a 16-gig 1RX8 PC5 4800. It's a Samsung brand. Looks like it's a... Yeah. So that's that should be a good, good RAM stick. It's not going to be as fast as some of the other brands, like I said, at 4800 megahertz, but still... Let's see. I think I had to, uh, I think I flipped this around. So. There we go. Okay, so overview of the internals. Battery. Two speakers here. We've got our third fan right here that blows across all of these heat pipes. We have got a shared heat pipe over the VRMs. We've got a double shared heat pipe over the CPU and GPU, and then a dedicated heat pipe for the CPU, dedicated heat pipe for the GPU, another dedicated heat pipe for the GPU. And uh, yeah, so we have four fan exhausts, one, uh, well, I guess it's more like three. You got one on each side, and then you got one huge one along the back. But the back area primarily um, is being cooled on the two sides over here where the, the air blows out right here and right here. This third fan does move air out the middle here, and I'm sure the fins also can help, um, you know, distribute heat across everything because there's this third, there's this really long heat pipe that goes across all of the fins, and then these probably cool the other heat pipes here. So it's a really interesting thermal design, um, the way they're distributing heat across the entire rear of the device. It's really cool. Um, now for our SSD slots, we've got one here on the left, our Wi-Fi right here as well. Let me see if I can pull this up. Interesting. It looks like, looks like it's wrapped around a little bit. I don't want to force anything. So Wi-Fi right here. Then we have our M.2 right here. This PCIe Gen 4 uh, M.2 slots. Uh, for both sides, and then, um, yeah, and our RAM slots, like I showed you before, are right here. Both of them are accessible and available, and of course, we have liquid metal on the CPU and GPU, uh, and it's uh, it's Conductonaut Extreme, which is basically pure gallium. All right. Cool. Uh, will I be getting the SCAR 164090? Yes. I ordered it 
That is probably the laptop I'm gonna end up keeping long-term, but I might end up going with a SCAR 18 instead. I really love having a number pad. And the big screen on this guy is so awesome, but at the same time, I, I'll, I kinda wanna get the SCAR because of its, the SCAR 16 because of the 11, uh, 1100 nits HDR display. How's the fan noise in this one? Uh, I didn't do enough testing yet to know exactly how the fan noise is, but it's not bad. It's like a nice medium. It is, it is noticeable, it is loud um, compared to some ultra quiet ones. And you do have low fan noise modes, but really the coil wine I think is gonna be the bigger issue for some people. So, all right. Double-sided M.2 SSD support, I believe so. Looked like there was room for it. I didn't check though. I didn't officially try it, but it looked like there was enough room. I doubt the SSDs they have in there because there's two one, two one terabyte SSDs, I think in RAID zero. I doubt those SSDs are um, double-sided out of the box. Yeah, I don't have any double-sided SSDs to test. I should probably get, try, I should probably try to buy one just for testing with these laptops. But um, I do have double-sided SSDs in my Lenovo. But am I interested in the GE78HX4090? Yes. Um, if I go with MSI this year, it'll probably be the GE78 instead of the GT77 because the GT77 is just a little too deep to fit into my backpack. Um, the SCAR18 actually does fit into my backpack, no problem, which kind of surprised me. I was like, whoa, this thing fits in here. Uh, but it was like just perfect, like a perfectly snug fit. Um, let's see here. Last screw right over here. Yeah, and my, my order of the, the GE78HX uh, was also back ordered and delayed. So <laughs> that's supposed to come in the first two weeks of March. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Power won't want to turn on right now. Oh, I wasn't pushing the power button in all the way. I guess the power button became loose. Okay. When I take the bottom off, maybe the power button needs to re reseat itself. I had, I felt it kind of snap into place again. So, kind of interesting. Cool, so just going over the laptop. Let me log in here. All right. So, after your armory crate update, my light bar is working, the light bar is working fine on this one. Uh, nice benchmark, see? And I did also update the Armory Crate to the latest version this morning. So I've already done all the driver updates. Um, I really like this SCAR 18 design. It is, it is distinctly more classy looking to me than the Strix G18, the black. I like the black. So anyway. All right, so we're go, we'll do a quick overview of the software that this thing comes with uh, and the ports. Let's also show the ports. So on the left side, right? On the left side, we have our power adapter port, ethernet, HDMI 2.1, a Thunderbolt 4, and then a USB-C with a display port and I believe power delivery. Um, I believe it's 100 watts of power delivery speed. 
So if you want to charge your laptop with a more portable adapter, you can do that. And then on the left here, we have two, sorry, on the right side, we have two USB A's and there's no ports on the back. Now I'm a little disappointed about the port selection on the SCAR 18. I wish it was a little bit better um, with maybe one more USB A or type C um, and then a full size SD card slot and then we'd be good to go. But uh, you know, if you look at something like the GT77 or the razor blade, they have those. And so it makes you go, well, can, I, can you get away with these ports? I think a lot of people can be okay with these ports, but less users will be happy with this port selection. So, so nice that the Keystone thing is gone this year. Well, the biggest, I thought the Keystone was pretty cool. I did use it a little bit when I had the SCAR 15, but it was pretty gimmicky and I don't think very many people actually really used it. So let's bust out Cinebench. Woohoo! I need to grab the mouse. Reposition this guy up to over there, and where's the mouse? There's the mouse. All right, so we're gonna put this. I need to put this kit away. Beautiful. All right. So you can see all the games we got downloaded, quite a few. Now, one thing I didn't do on the Strix G18 is I didn't check what GPU mode the G18 was in, standard, ultimate, or eco, or optimized. I don't know if that's an option on the G18, it probably is. I honestly don't know that it's even gonna make any difference, but I should probably check. Um, now, there, so this is Armory Crate. This is Asus's software for controlling your laptop. It's been effective and lightweight uh, and easy to use for me. Um, I've never really had issues with it. It usually works really well. Um, so inside of here, the options are primarily that you're gonna play with is silent, performance, turbo, and manual. Inside of the manual mode, you're gonna actually be able to set the power limits for your CPU. This is the short, uh, the, the long-term power limit is set to 140. The short-term power limit is 175. So it'll boost up to 175 short, for a period of time and then it'll come back down. Chris G says it absolutely makes a difference. Ultimate disables iGPU completely for better performance. Why would that increase performance though? I don't see why that would make a difference. But like I said, I will test it. I will test it on the G18 to make sure um, before I do my final review on it. All right, so, but I'm just, I'm pointing out that it, that I, I did not change that mode on the G18 in the previous live benchmarking. That's basically what I'm pointing out. So um, I always try to have full transparency and be as thorough as I can in my videos. So that's, uh, that's why I mentioned that. I could have tried to hide my mistake, but I try to, try to let people know what's going on. All right, so we're in manual fan mode. We've got a uh, 150 boost to the base clock inside of this manual fan mode. I think Lance may have upped this to a higher level than um, it's normally at. I'm not sure what the normal default is. Normally I would just let the default roll um, in terms of performance here. I did do a little bit of overclock testing uh, in TimeSpy last night, just for funsies, while the stuff was, uh, not while I was downloading, but basically when, after everything had been downloaded, I was like, hmm, I wonder what kind of performance I can get. Less wattage being pulled for the iGPU, more wattage for the CPU. Okay, thanks for making that uh, clear, Chris. That might make a difference for CPU bound games. So i uh, be interested to try that. Test, the, test it with it on and off and see what kind of performance difference you get. Okay. So 
Cinebench. We're gonna do manual mode. All of these fans are set to maximum fans. We're gonna go ahead and save this and enable it. We're gonna start hearing the fans ramping up pretty soon here. When do you get the Blade 18? I believe they tried delivering it yesterday and failed. We weren't at the house. So, okay, uh, Cinebench. I don't, I thought he said he downloaded it. Let's see. Does the thermal target option really work? Um, you're talking about inside of here. So I'm pretty sure you could, uh, if you wanted to set this lower, you could set it lower. And when you're doing manual fans at 100%, it's basically never gonna get to 87, as far as I've seen. I've never seen it go that high, so. Um, That would be, that would be my um, understanding. But if you're if you're trying to say not go above eighty, then you basically it should cap it to eighty and then start thermal throttling the GPU at eighty. Um, ideally, you should never have to do that unless unless you're trying to hit a specific fan target. All right. So as always, we're putting the. Um, the external SSD under the back. All right. There's a chance I can get the Blade 18 today, but I probably am not gonna do the Blade 18 live streams until I'm done with the Scar ones, because I have to give this Scar back to Lance. So um, we're trying to get it done as quickly as I can. So we'll see. Blade 18 will probably be the start of next week. All right, so we should be good to go. We're in max fan mode. All the power limits are raised up as high as they can go that Asus lets us set. Uh, I don't believe there's any kind of uh, offset, so no voltage offset, zero. So there is no undervolting going on right now. This is gonna be all stock. Are you ready? Let's see what we get for a single run, and then we'll do a 10 minute run. Well, I also get the Neo 17. I already have the Neo 17. It's just uh, just busy. I haven't had a chance to, to do the live stream yet because basically um, I have to prioritize the most popular laptops first for the, the health of my channel. Um, once I get through some of the more popular laptops and there's a little bit of a lull, boom, the XMG Neo 17 is gonna be there. Um, and don't worry, it'll, it's coming. I'll probably do the live unboxing sometime next week probably. But it's not, see that's the thing though, it's not the full official Neo 17 because it's the pre-production version that I can't fully benchmark. So it's kind of like, it doesn't feel like a waste of time, but it's kind of a waste of time to do benchmarks on it. But I could do an unboxing and some basic testing. Um, but that's kind of another reason why I've held off on doing it. It's just because it's a pre-production unit. All right, so we got 31,366. That's pretty dang good. That is pretty dang good. I wish... Uh, we could undervolt. I saw a pretty crazy undervolt score today from uh, Brax. He's uh, one of the one of the subscribers. He had sent me and he posted on Reddit as well a 35,000 Cinebench score with a hefty undervolt on a Legion Pro 7i, and it really shows how important undervolting can be for a gaming laptop uh, if you want to maximize the performance. All right, so let's go ahead and do a 10-minute test. So 31,366 is our single run score. And let me reset. We'll see what our averages are during this time period. Right now we're pulling 4.2 uh, gigahertz. Our wattage core CPU power, package power, it boosted up to 177 at the peak. And now it's holding at 168. 
162, so far averaging 165. Now it's boosting up to 175. Drop down to 135 during the refresh. Now it's 170. So it's pulling a ton of power during these initial first few runs. Uh, CH40SX, any gaming benchmarks today? Yes, we are definitely gonna do Hogwarts at a minimum. I have more games downloaded though. So we're gonna be able to potentially do a couple other uh, benchmarks as well. Um, probably focus on some of the quicker ones that have built-in benchmarks. So um, yeah, so there will be more game benchmarks today than just uh, your traditional uh, Time Spy, Cinebench, and Hogwarts. We'll do, I'm thinking two extra games today. Not sure which ones, I'm open to suggestions. But, um, all right, so looking at our temperatures, on our core temps, we're averaging 79 degrees, but currently they're at 86. The CPU package temps have jumped up to 92 degrees, uh, but they've averaged 87 on the run so far. Now, as we power limit throttle eventually down to 140, it still hasn't gone down to 140, surprisingly enough. It's been a minute and a half. And it still hasn't gone down to 140. Did it just go down to 140? It just went down to 140. 145 right now, 139. Okay. So now that it's down to 139, our temperatures are going to pull back down again. And we're going to see a little bit lower clocks. We were pulling 4.2 gigahertz, uh, but now we're doing 3.9. And that's the difference between uh, being able to maintain that 175 watt TDP and when it pulls back down to 140. So... The highest performance CPU laptops are gonna be able to just basically maintain that ultra high, like 165, 175 target range nonstop. Like the GT77, I think can definitely do that. Um, the XMG Neo 17, I don't know if it can do that. Probably not quite, probably more like 140, I think is what they've said in their documentation. Um, because it's just thermal throttles at that point. Um, they don't have as many heat pipes as this guy. Um, and that's with liquid cooling on a curling. I think it's 120 for the XMG Neo, um, more testing needed, not official numbers. The, the Alienware M16 was able to do about 165 continuously before thermal throttling at like 95, 99 degrees, pretty consistently. Um, and that was without much of it. That was without any undervolt. So if you undervolted that sucker, I'm pretty sure the Alienware is going to do, um, some really crazy numbers. What about the Blade 18? Blade 18 is supposed to uh, max out at 120 consistently. It should boost up to like 150, 160, 170. And then after 30, 40, after a minute or two, it's gonna come back down to 120 and stay there. Uh, but with the Blade 16, you can actually overclock it. So I think the Blade 18, you're gonna be able to do that too and probably undervolt it too. And if you can do both of those, I mean, the sky's the limit probably for the, I don't know, not the sky's limit. I'm anticipating well above 30,000 if you're undervolting and raising the power limit up to like 150, 160 on the Blade 18. I don't know. I got to at least test it, see if it can actually do that. But that's my current guess is that you're going to be able to raise the power limits up um, to like 140, 150 um, at least. Possibly like 160 with a good undervolt, maybe. And then hopefully over 30,000 at least for the Blade 16 and 18, maybe even like 32,000 for the Blade 16 and 18. Uh, but that's with tweaking it and getting it just, just right, you know? Um, whereas this one's already doing 31K out of the box, you know? That's, I like that, so. Is it hard to undervolt and will you make some tutorials or something? So Daydream, I went through how to do an undervolt on the Strix G18 live unboxing video. Uh, and it's not that hard. You go to the BIOS and then you can do a minus 30 millivolt undervolt, which is not that big. Um, the Legion Pro 7i that got 35,000 had a minus 125 millivolt undervolt, which is a mm, f more, f more than four times stronger of an undervolt. And Asus just doesn't let us undervolt more than... Uh, 30 millivolts, which is kind of silly. I think they should at least let the user try to go to at least 100 millivolts undervolt. Personally, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I mean, I'm curious behind the logic behind minus 30. I mean, very few laptops will fail at minus 30 millivolt undervolt. Some might, 
probably very few. I think that's probably the reason. But in a, a more advanced user that's doing undervolting should know how to like recover their BIOS or something if they you know reset their CMOS if they do undervolt too far, uh, in a in a BIOS scenario. You know, usually if you're doing undervolting in something like Intel XTU or Throttle Stop, it's not a problem because you can always just boot up in safe mode so those don't launch, and then you don't have the undervolt uh, active anymore, and you can just you know reset the undervolt back to a lower level. Um, so the next time you boot, it doesn't go as low in the undervolt. It's very rare, though, that you're going to crash from an undervolt um, that's too severe, unless it's just like a crazy, like you, you put in a minus 1,000 millivolt undervolt or something, and then it's just impossible for the CPU to even work. But that's extremely, usually there's limits placed on it. Usually minus 150 millivolt undervolt is about the max I've ever seen a laptop be able to do. Uh, but I don't know this new generation, maybe you can do a minus 125 millivolt undervolt on most of the CPUs. We don't know. I hope that makes sense. Um, I need to switch the cameras out in the machine and then we'll do a review of how the, the SCAR 18 is doing on Cinebench here. Okay, please let me know if the audio is desynced and now that we've reset. And let's go ahead and check out our stats here. All right, so we're hitting that 3.9 gigahertz, nice and consistent for our whole run, 3.99 gigahertz, 4.0 gigahertz right there. On our E cores, we're doing 3.3 gigahertz. If we were to undervolt the SCAR 18, uh, we would basically see probably like, like a point a one gigahertz up uptick here, um, and that's with a thirty millivolt undervolt. If we could undervolt more, we'd be able to see even more performance gains uh, happen. So our CPU core temps they've averaged eighty degrees. That's fantastic. Um, it, you would not have to worry about this thing overheating at all if you're doing long renders for extended periods of time. CPU package power, um, CPU package temps are at 86 degrees on average. Um, our overall package power has averaged 143 over this 10 minute run. We're almost done, minute and a half left. Um, it's a fantastic overall CPU platform here in the SCAR 18. It's well tuned. I just wish that they would let the users boost performance and undervolt to their heart's content rather than locking it down in the BIOS. That would be my main feedback to ASUS. Like this is great for the casual users that don't wanna mess with stuff, but the more advanced users are feeling a little left out right now. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, Mario is wondering about the Blade 16. Will the Blade 18 be better than the 16 with the same specs? Uh, yes, I believe so. The, the Blade 18 has a third fan, and it's a bigger chassis, so there's just more opportunity for heat dissipation. And um, the thermals on it should allow higher-end performance by at least 5%, 10% out of the box. And with, you, with an overclock, it may be even a little bit more than that. Um, we'll see. But the Blade 18 should be a little bit faster. Bl Razer themselves claim a 110 watt CPU t uh, TDP for the Blade 16 and 120 for the Blade 18. So 10 more for the Blade 18. So that's like a 9% increase to the TDP built into the laptops. So that's without any fine tuning. Matthias Bossman, there is no difference out of the box. I have both here. Interesting. Well, Razer claims they've 
have a 10 watt difference uh, to the TDP and CPU only loads. I don't know about GPU loads or whatnot. All right, so we got 29,556. That is an excellent score. It's not going to be as high as what we're going to get on some of the other laptops that have higher TDPs above 140. Um, still, great score, great all around temperatures. Uh, during the during the test and it's going to be nice and consistently fast performance which is what you want when you get a laptop and most users they don't want to mess with stuff like this so having the nice consistent fast performance whew, that's what people love right okay so <clears throat> we need to do our display test Now this is supposed to be the same display as the scar uh, as the scar 18 but still I want to uh, I want to do a test and see if there's much variance between the scar 18 and this display it should be uh, it should be at least within 50 nits, nits of 500, and then hopefully we're getting around 90% um, Adobe RGB, 90% uh, P3 color gamut with the Spider 5, because um, that means that other tools will probably register that closer to 500 nits and at near 100% Adobe and P3 color gamuts. Asus should just unlock everything and let the user have the final control. So Jeremiah Gillis, I tend to agree with you. I think that they should not necessarily unlock everything out of the box, but they should maybe at least have like a BIOS option or an armory crate option that switches over to being unlocked. Like what Razer did in, in Razer Synapse, you have an option that you tick off and it, and it makes everything unlocked. So... Matthew says there's only a 30-point th difference between a Blade 16 and 18. And the is that with everything tested exactly the same, Matthias? That's interesting. Um, like all the, the settings are, are done the same? Or is that with you undervolting and ch changing other settings? Um, Okay, let's see here. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. Pulling up. Pulling up the file here. All right, I got to type in a code here and get this plugged in. So I've got to change camera angles for a moment. One of these days, I'm going to forget to change the camera angle and you're going to see the license code. And then all of you people out there with uh, Spider-5 Elites are going to be like, oh, a software code that I can totally use. Because you have to have one of these things to even use the code. So it doesn't really matter that much, but... Still... Uh... Still, this is not my code, so I, I can't share it with anybody else. Okay. Shabalagoo, shabalagoo, we are in. Lance gets to have his uh, display tested for him. So, so Lance was excited about getting the SCAR 18 because he's upgrading from an Alienware X14 
And he uses that on the road. He's a, uh, he works in a job that requires him to travel like half the time. And, uh, and he said that this laptop should be way better than his old X14, which is going to be true. You're going to be able to, you don't have to turn down the settings basically in almost anything with this laptop and still get flawless performance in basically every single game. All right, so display is up to maximum brightness. Audio desync. All right. Hello. All right. Let me know if that fixed the audio desync, everybody. All right, now we're ready to start our brightness test. Got to say, this display is gorgeous. All right, so we're setting our brightness down to zero. Measuring. Uh, the brightness did not change on the display. Oh. That's weird. Okay, so we're going to have to cancel that test. Huh. We've got a software bug here, folks. We found a bug in the system. Um, let's go for a restart and see if it fixes it. We should be able to modify the brightness of the display. I don't know why. Apollo says, just saw this. Thanks for going live. Any estimate on when the SCAR 16 will arrive? And yes, audio is fixed now. Uh, so the SCAR 16 has been delayed. Whoa, let's see here. Um, it's been delayed. It just says back ordered. It doesn't say when. I'm guessing March. Like sometime mid-March is when I'm going to probably get it. Um, so kind of sucks, but yeah. Johan Jason says, is the Asus G18 chassis and lid material same as SCAR? Uh, yeah, they're both metal lids. Um, how many open and closes will the hinge break on the laptop, you think? Oh, I don't think this hinge is going to break anytime soon, but I don't know for sure. You know, it's hard to say. Uh, I can't. I can't say for sure one way or the other. Well, it looks like the display brightness is now set to zero. Upon restart, it reset to the right brightness. But, yeah. That's not great. And we're not, it's not wanting to change the brightness now. So we'll just have to measure the brightness at the brightest settings here. Um, right now, it's set to... Maximum brightness. Uh, Giancarlo, hey bro, which is better option between the Razer Blade and the Strix G16 with RTX 4090? So basically the Blade 16 and the Scar 16. Um, that's a tough choice. There's definitely a lot of pros and cons between the two of them. But I would say that the... I'm going to try to update a Armory Crate. Looks like there's an update for it. Maybe it'll fix this. Um, so do this update real quick, and then we'll restart again. Uh, so between the Blade 16 and the Scar 16, the Scar 16 should have slightly more performance, and the Scar 16 should also be um, a little more desirable to me because it's got a QHD uh, 1100 nits display HDR brightness display. And it's 240 hertz QHD. So I like that more than the dual native 4K 120 full HD 240 that the Blade 16 has. Uh, so that's probably the biggest difference to me. 
Uh, looks like it's still not working for brightness adjustment, so we're just gonna set it to max brightness and we're gonna do a restart and it should be at maximum brightness then. Um, so the SCAR-16 should be, have a cooler wrist rest when you're playing games. The SCAR-16 should have slightly higher performance. The SCAR-16 is not gonna be as firm and rigid as the Blade-16. The Blade-16 is gonna have uh, a thinner overall profile and more premium feeling. Um, a larger touchpad, and uh, if you prefer a 4K 120 hertz display, that's probably the biggest reason to pick the Blade uh, 16. And uh, yeah, if you prefer QHD 240 hertz, that's probably the biggest reason to pick, to pick the Scar. So um, does that all make sense? I think that's probably the biggest core differences right there. So this display brightness is definitely super bright now again. And just to double check, yep, that it's not working still. So we're gonna have to reload our spider software and test again, but it's basically only gonna be testing it at the maximum brightness for all, the, all of the tests, it's fine. What is the maximum undervolting for the Razor Blade 18? I don't know that yet. Haven't been able to do that test. Uh, when I, when after I do my live unboxing and benchmarking, I should be able to tell you, though. Um, I also want to mention that memberships are now live on the channel. So if you want to become a member, if you want to be the first member right now, uh, you should be able to go on there and become a member now. It's, I think, $5 to start with, and you become eligible to uh, buy review unit laptops that I decide to sell. So there will be probably several laptops a month for as long as I'm reviewing laptops that I'll be able to resell. Um, and basically the point of the, the review program, resale program is to uh, be able to sell laptops that I've tested to you viewers and then also be able for me to be able to buy any laptop and then be able to quickly resell it to, uh, to people with, that, with less hassle. And then you guys also know that the laptop's fully tested and everything. So there's advantages going back and forth, but basically if you're a member, you're gonna get put on the wait list and in the, it's gonna be a first come first serve type of wait list. So, uh, and the, basically the top of the wait list is gonna be able to decide if they wanna buy the laptop or not. Um, so we're just gonna have to hit measure at every brightness level as being 100%. Uh, Giancarlo says, thank you, bro. And is there much difference in performance between ROG Strix Scar 16 and 18? No. They should, in theory, be nearly identical performance, according to ASUS. That's what they say. But I'm anticipating slightly better temperatures on the 18-inch version. Um, I have my Blade 18 at a 0 0.23, uh, 0 0.235 undervolt. That's insane. Are you sure it's stable? Try rendering something in Adobe Premiere. Um, like try rendering a 4K file in Adobe Premiere and see if it stays alive. It's, that's, a, that's a high undervolt. You might be able to get high, high scores with that in Cinebench, but when you actually do AV, AV workloads, you're probably going to uh, end up crashing the laptop. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the new 13th gen Intel are like tons of undervolt potential. Legion 7i, inside is an upgrade, to outside is a downgrade. Yeah, pretty much. Did you have your hands on with the new Legion Pro 7i and what's your opinion? Yeah, I did get hands on with it. I've made a couple videos on it. You should check those out. Uh, the only thing that's not included in the videos that I made on the Legion Pro 7i is I didn't know that the touchpad has turned to plastic instead of glass. That's a big downgrade and... Um, has caused me to lower the rating on the Pro 7i by a little bit in the keyboard and mouse um, territory. So, but overall, I think that I think the Pro 7i is going to be a really. Uh, I think it's going to be a really fantastic laptop still, and a lot of people are going to be very happy with it because it's basically one of the cheapest RTX 4000 series laptops that money can buy. while still being reasonable quality. Like it's not like it's, it's not like it's horrific quality or something, you know? 
Okay, so our results for the test at 100% brightness, we got 100% sRGB coverage, 91% Adobe RGB, 90% of the P3 color gamut, and it's only 400 nits brightness. Interesting. That I did not expect. I am curious and also wondering if maybe the display is not at 100% brightness because we're running into some bugs there. So I'm not gonna count this as my official brightness score or even really my color gamut score um, until I can at least actively change the brightness of the laptop. Um, it's so weird that it's not working right now. I'm sure a software update will get that fixed. So anyway. All right, I think we're ready to go into Hogwarts. Woohoo! All right, I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. So which games should we also test besides Hogwarts, huh? I was thinking we could try testing some games that we haven't tested yet. Uh, with the RTX 4000 series, I've got Far Cry 5. We got Microsoft Flight Simulator maybe. Um, hmm, maybe Control. I don't know, we could also just do Cyberpunk because that's a very standardized test now. Uh, and we will see the difference between an RTX 4080 and 4090 in that one. That was probably very interesting. Um, so let's do Cyberpunk after this. We'll do Cyberpunk and Far Cry 5. Maybe Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Those should be fairly quick. Yeah, Shisa would like to see Cyberpunk. We'll do Cyberpunk, Far Cry 5, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider because there's a lot of, uh, I have a lot of benchmarks I can show you to compare the uh, previous gen performance in Far Cry 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, and not so much, not so much the, um, probably gonna just leave default settings on for these tests. Um, I don't have comparative results for for Cyberpunk unless we test it differently. But using the benchmark, uh, we'd be able to compare it with uh, the RTX 4000 series laptops that we've already tested at least. Okay. All right, so right now, I need to get Afterburner going. Shabam. Hopefully we can hook in Uh, let's go size 20, 500, boom. I should probably go a little smaller on the size though. It's a little, a little too big. That's what she said. Okay. That should be pretty good. Uh, looks like we have a frame cap at 60. We need to change that. Uncap. Bingo bongo. So, in this test, 
Oh, we went the wrong way. Got to go the other way. So this is the run through central hall test. Uh, Lance saying maybe the brightness button is catching, but uh, it's showing me that it's changing uh, in the software, but just not actually changing the brightness of the display. So I don't think that's the reason. All right, so in this exact same test, I think we were getting what, 150 or like 145 with the Alienware M16 and Strix G18, somewhere right in that range. So we're gonna see what we're gonna get. We're gonna see what we're gonna get in with the RTX 4090. Right now we're doing 180, which is 30 frames more. All right, here we go. Do, do, do. So the number to beat is 150-ish, give or take a few. And basically we run through this door and we stop on the stairs. Kabam. So 174. So that's about a 25 to 30 FPS gain with the RTX 4090. Very nice. Now, the big, the big gain with the RTX 4090 in this game is notice our 1% lows with ultra settings, 72 FPS. Super smooth gameplay because we have the VRAM to handle the textures in this game better. That is right now the biggest upgrade with the RTX 4080 to 4090 uh, with this game. Like, do you notice how smooth this thing's running? We don't have, we're not having any stuttering at all. It's fantastic. I love it. I love it so much. And it's so sad that the 4080 doesn't come with more uh, VRAM. All right, so let's, let's load over to Hogsmeade. I need to go here, we'll go load game. I believe it's this save. Yes. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, looking at our temps are pretty rocking. Also, look, look at this. We're just pulling straight, nonstop, 250, 265. Just 265 TDP right now through the CPU and GPU. Can it maintain that? Let's find out. Let's just hold it here for like a minute. Can it maintain that? That's incredible. <laughs> like nutty. Now the temperature on the CPU is, is monstrous. It's 90, 93, but we're not even thermal throttling on the CPU despite this insane throughput. So it's basically 260, 265, like average TDP. Um, the, the GPU seems hotter than on the Strix G18. I agree. Um, but I don't think the Strix G18 was tested in this area. And uh, this is definitely a very CPU uh, focused area with all these NPCs. Like see how many NPCs there are? There's like 30 NPCs on the display right now. And that's why. Um, when you have this many NPCs, it's gonna really down the, you know, it's gonna be very CPU bound and push the CPU to the limit. So, wow, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, all right. Let's go ahead and do a run through now of Hogsmeade and three, two, one. All right, so this, oh, we got some, a little bit of load stuttering as we're going through Hogsmeade. We haven't, we haven't lived into this area yet. So I don't think that's related to the VRAM, but uh, still that's game optimization issues. So running through here, again, a little bit of 1% low stutters. We'll do it again and see if the 1% lows are a lot better. I imagine they will be once everything's loaded in. All right, so there's our test, 150, 150. Are you in turbo mode or manual mode in Armory Crate? I'm in manual mode in Armory Crate. Oh, we got it, oh, hold on, we got it. We gotta pet the kitty cat. This is a must do scenario, all right? You never see a cat in Hogwarts and not pet it. 
All right, uh, let's go ahead. We'll do another run through here in Hogsmeade. All right, I don't, I, I'm thinking the 1% lows won't be any better, but we'll see. Hogsmeade, is, this is probably the most complex area of the game that I've found so far. Like, uh, just because of there's so many NPCs and buildings and stuff all close together. Um, so this is like kind of worst case scenario. I've got about 14 hours inside of Hogwarts now of gameplay. And I'm loving the game. It's, it's awesome. I'm really enjoying the game. All right. Here we go. So our 1% lows are looking great this time around on this run through, but we'll see. Now that everything's loaded in, our FPS is so much better. So this is kind of like The Witcher 3. You got to run through all the areas to get all the stuff to, to load in. Oh, our 1% lows went down to 16 there. It was like one area or something that didn't get loaded in or was out of the memory. So it caused us to dip below 60s. But uh, 36, for, the, for like 99% of that, it was perfectly smooth, like no stutters. Um, so 154, 36. I'm, I'm really impressed with the performance. Uh, let's go ahead and do a no frame gen run. No frame generation. Just DLSS on quality. Uh, have they fixed the ray tracing crash bug yet? Uh, I haven't tested it yet. Why don't we find out? Um, we might end up crashing the game, but we'll see. All right, ray tracing is on all on and on ultra. Let's apply the settings. We have to restart the game. To do this, hmm. Let's do our other tests with it off first. Let's finish these tests and then we'll restart the game because I don't have to restart the game again, again and again, you know? All right, so no frame generation on now. We're going to run through Hogsmeade. Dun, dun, dun. So we had another stutter. I don't think it's related to the um, the VRAM anymore for those stutters. All right, and done. 82.8. Okay. So frame generation boosted us basically 100% gain almost. It was like... 82 FPS to 154 FPS. That is insane. Like, why would you not want to run it with frame gen on? It's like, here, double the performance of your, of your smoothness of your gameplay. I don't know. Unless... Yeah. Anyway, so no DLSS. No frame generation. All right. Raw performance, here we go. It's gonna be even worse. Or not that much worse, I guess. Maybe it's because this is a CPU bound area. Whoa, interesting. It's almost the same. This is so interesting. Yeah, it must be a very CPU bound area because our GPU is only getting up to, uh, yeah, our GPU utilization was only like 70, 60, 60, 70s, 80, 90 right now. So depending on the area you're in, this is a very CPU bound area of the game. Interesting, Hogwarts is CPU bound, at least for parts of it. So 79 FPS with DLSS disabled. So DLSS didn't help us much there. Huh, super interesting. I love learning about graphical performance. It's, it's different, uh, different types of performance you can expect in different games, that's for sure. Uh, the whistle was too loud on the Scar 16. You had to return it, Whammo. Interesting. You should have sent it to me, man. <laughs> no, I mean, smaller chassis tend to have uh, more whistly fans. That's true. Um, 
I would say on max fans, this is still a little bit whistly, but the fans aren't too loud. It's like um, it's not it's not it's not so bad. Like the GT seventy seven is supposed to be like really really loud. Um, I don't think this is going to be that loud. I w- if I'm guessing, I'm guessing this is like fifty five decibels, give or take a decibel. I don't know. Okay, we are now ready. We're going to go restart the game with the ray tracing on. Let's see if it's working now. And we'll go ahead and do DLSS with frame gen on. Set to quality. All right. Exit the game. Gene says, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the fans are any larger on the 16 versus 18. I don't know. It's a very similar thermal design. They may have the exact same sound. Um, it's hard to say. I'd have to actually test it, though. That's the thing. Uh, if there is much of a difference, I doubt it's going to be that big. Um, most likely, my recommendation in general, if you want a quieter fan system, is uh, you just got to tune the fans you got to tune the fans you with your own manual fan control because there's like usually a decibel place like uh like once the fans hit like 60 percent, it starts to get noisier and then like 80 percent, it gets extra noisy and then you go to 100 percent fans it's like super noisy like super loud so uh you got to tune it to where your limit is and then try to get the most acceptable performance for that that fan level um that's just generally what I recommend to pretty much everybody. Luffy asks, hey, Gizmo, does Asus have any software to overclock GPU, CPU, and is it better than manually tuning it? So Asus does let you overclock the GPU in the armory crate, but uh, it is not very crazy overclocking. It's like minimal. So what I'd recommend is uh, using something like Afterburner and... You can go much higher, especially on the memory clock speed. And uh, so that's pretty much what you got to do if you want to reach max performance overclocking. Um, so like the GPU clock on the Armory Crate, I think is like 300 and memory clocks 500 is the cap. But like I was able to overclock the memory last night in Time Spy to like 1100 megahertz on this laptop. And that it was still stable at that point. So... Um, I'm not sure how high you can go on the memory overclock. All right, so we have ray tracing enabled. Can you see a difference? RTX off, RTX on. Is it? Uh, is there a difference? I'm very curious. Oh, okay, a little bit of shine coming off the pavement stones. I don't know if I, I don't know if I noticed that before. That's a little more immersive and accurate, I guess. All right, uh, let's go ahead and run through this. All right, are you ready? Here we go. So this is now, well, we might have to run through this twice if the 1% lows are stuttering like crazy. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna have to do this twice. So I'm just gonna run up here. I'm gonna look around. And then we're gonna run back and do it again. Basically, I gotta do what I do with the Witcher. So Jones asks, can you turn off NVIDIA Dynamic Boost and then turn turn off NVIDIA Framework Controller and turn on Max Limits and Afterburner? Then you can see more than see more than 170 TDP on GPU. Interesting. I might have to do that for a stream sometime. Not in this one. Um, anything I do related to that kind of stuff, I'd want to test beforehand so I don't lead people wrong. And then someone's like following along, and we fry laptops or something um but that's interesting okay all right here we go so we have dlss on quality frame generation enabled rtx on ultra those are our settings right now Ooh, that was a big stutter 
I'm guessing those uh, fireworks, <laughs> the fireworks in front of that shop probably trigger off the uh, ray tracing. <laughs> I don't know. How many gigs does the 490 have? It has 16 gigs of VRAM. Okay, so we got 98 FPS. Uh, with ray tracing disabled, I think we pulled 154. So you get 50% more FPS turning off ray tracing. This is obviously still gonna be extremely playable. Uh, like in a game like this, I think I'd probably want to, uh, I'd probably want about 90 FPS would be my goal. And then as little stuttering as possible. All right, so we'll do one, uh, one side quest. We'll go into one of these shops and talk to the people we need to talk to. And uh, let's see here, we don't need to go there. We need to go to, we need to go to Tomes and Scrolls. Whoa, we're pulling 270 on the Watts right there. 270 Watts. This, this is such a CPU bound area. It is nuts. Okay, uh, I believe this is Tomes and Scrolls. Wait, no? We are new, yeah, no, we are in Tomes and Scrolls, okay. Yes. Pardon me, sir, I'm here for the spell cross, Professor Weasley. Huh. Tell that student, I thought I might be seeing you soon. I am the proprietor here, Thomas Brown. I take it you've had a conjuring lesson then. I'm afraid I haven't yet, sir. Ah, uh, but you will soon enough. It is magic at its purest, creating something out of nothing. Of course, it is not without complexity, but that is where my spellcrafts come in. Stay the course, and you could soon impress even Professor Weasley. That's certainly something to aspire to, Mr. Brown. I look forward to that day. And I too see in it. Look at our memory usage. We're pulling 13 gigs of VRAM right now. Like custom pieces of furniture or decorations. That is pretty crazy. But I should let Professor Weasley do the teaching. For now, let's get the spell cross. Shows that you really need more than 12 gigs if you want to max textures in this game. Yes, I believe so, sir. Good. Nothing like Because you, you also want a bit of uh, extra wiggle room. Do what you want, when you want. To be able to swap Let's the textures in and out, you need that extra space on the VRAM. Let's look at what we have, shall we? Nothing like finding just if you're interested. Feel free to Beautiful. Look along at the rest of my inventory. Okay. So there's Hogwarts. I'm 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 really impressed with how many wattages we're pulling in Hogsmeade here. It is nuts. It is nuts. Okay, uh, we will save the game. Boom, and we're gonna go ahead and go to Far Cry 5 now. Check out the 4090 performance there. And uh, Far Cry 5. And we're gonna do Far Cry 5, and we're gonna lose Cyberpunk 2077. Dun to dun. Mike says, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mike. Welcome back to the live stream. Oof, that makes me want to get the water-cooled laptops. Yeah, if you're, I think if, especially if you're sensitive to sound, a water-cooled laptop, oof, very nice. Very little sound, at least when you're using it with the water cooling. It's one of the quietest, highest performance that you can get. You can do a minus 30 undervolt in the advanced BIOS settings for the CPU. Um, yeah, so um, if you do the undervolt on this machine, that should help us. That should help us get better performance in the Hogsmeade section. Because it is CPU bound and it was pulling a lot of wattages.
Is the 4090 worth it over the 4080 for laptops considering the 1K plus price difference? Well, it's not always that big of a difference. Um, sometimes it's as low as $400 increase from 4080 to 4090. And if it's only $400, I would say absolutely it's worth it. In this scenario where you're getting the SCAR 18 versus the Strix 18, I think it's $1,400. And that's where it becomes a lot harder to know for sure if it's worth it recommending the, uh, the 4090. I'm leaning towards no, I think. I don't know. What do you think? We need to do more testing and get the exact performance difference. If it's closer to 20% performance gains, then yeah, it's probably worth, even the $1,000 upgrade might be worth it. Um, the biggest difference, I think, is going to be the VRAM. Like Certain games are going to be able to play smoother like Hogwarts with less stuttering. So. Mike Mishler says, FYI, Brandon, you have no clue how much your videos mean to the retailers. We have not had this level of detail on laptops until you started all of this. Much appreciated, sir. Really? So, Mike, you do work for Dell. You liar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh... Are you going to end up keeping the Titan as your favorite laptop or liking the SCAR better? Um, I don't know. I've got the Titan coming in in the next day or two, I think. So I'm trying to get the SCAR 18 wrapped up, all the videos on that wrapped up, and then I'll be able to go to the Titan once that comes in. But uh, my priority right now is the SCAR 18. Um, I, I don't anticipate keeping the Titan. If I, like, I'm not anticipating ordering it. Um, Mainly because it doesn't fit in my film bag backpack. If it if it was an inch less deep, I'd be all over it. I'd keep it. That would be the, that'd probably be the one I would I would get. The other thing is too, I, I want a 240 hertz display. I'm an esports player in my soul, and I need that 240 hertz resolution refresh. And they had supposedly this, the GT77 is supposed to get a 240 hertz, but. They just, they haven't released it. So I'm, you know, I'm like, until they release the 240 Hertz QHD version, it's not really an option that I would consider. Uh, at least for me personally, that's a totally personal thing though. Most people are gonna be totally fine with that 4K 144 Hertz display. Um, okay, so we're gonna do QHD 16 by 10. And then we're going to switch over uh, to, f to full HD 16 by 9 and run the test because that's, the, I believe, the numbers that I'll have to compare against. I'll be able to show you the performance here. Difference between the uh, this generation and previous gens. What about the Raider? Raider that is the 240 hertz. Yes. And the Raider fits into my backpack. So I'm think that's why I'm thinking if I keep an MSI this year, it'll probably be the Raider GE 78 HX. Been a while since I heard this music. Pretty sure I used to dream in this music when I benchmarked this game all the time. Uh, for a non-native English speaker, what does bang for the buck mean and coil wine? Uh, so bang for the buck means value for your money how much performance you're getting for your money. Um, and uh, coil wine is vibration noises coming from the voltage regulation modules inside the laptop. Basically, electricity going through the motherboard causes vibrations, which can make annoying sound to some people. And it'll be more noticeable. I haven't heard any coil wine yet from the, the SCAR 18, um, but I've been in manual fan mode. It's completely masked it. So, our average FPS was 155, our low was 113. Pretty crazy for QHD 16 by 10. Um, that's higher than anything I did at 1080p. Uh, and this, that's obviously way more resolution. So we're gonna do 16 by nine, 1080. If we can, I'd like to do full screen. Please. No, it's not going to like full screen. Um, okay, so we're going to do... This doesn't seem like it's the right render. 
res resolution scaling I it does not look like this is a 1080p but it's at 1 so weird I can't see if this is enabled or disabled and I need to make this window, uh, make the text smaller so we can read it. Um, okay, VSync off. I don't know, maybe just the menu is reduced. It's weird. Let's find out. Switch cam. Oh, okay. I'm going to restart the benchmark here. You guys saw the entire previous benchmark, right? Is that correct? You guys saw the previous benchmark on the stream? Coil line is very hard to predict, even for the same product. That is true. Uh, but I have seen testimonials of at least five different people mentioning coil line on the Strix series lineup between the Scar 18 and the G18. So I think it's very common. Um, I believe it's very common. So. Okay, so our FPS ten eighty P ultra settings. It's almost the same. This is such a CPU bound game. Yeah, this is such a CPU bound game, it's so interesting. Our FPS is almost the same between ten eighty P and full HD. Okay, I gotta restart this again, don't I? Wait, oh no, it's working. You guys got it, okay. It died when you started the benchmark, okay. So did you guys see the QHD? Um, did you see the QHD test all the way through the end? Do I need to redo the QHD test? This does not seem to be 1080p. You did not see the QHD test? All right, I'm going to redo the QHD test then. Um, all right, 16 by 10 QHD. We're going to apply those changes. Yeah, I mean, this, this should all be correct. I don't know. It's just, it's, I think the menus just don't get scaled very well in Far Cry. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to go. I prefer full screen as well. When possible. So look at that. Our QHD result is almost better than 1080p. It's because it's it's a CPU bound game, and it's CPU bound to like two cores. <laughs> Far Cry 5 is not a very optimized game, but it's still a fun game if you haven't played it. It's like Montana Rednecks Go Wild. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying the live stream, please hit that like button. It helps. It helps. So 149 is our FPS average, 105, a little bit lower than the first time. 
Am I getting the Scar 16 Mini LED? I am. But at some point, I've ordered it. One of these days, maybe it'll come in. Okay. So, there's Far Cry 5. Uh, how is the backlight bleed? I have not noticed any backlight bleed on this unit. But I haven't really played dark games yet, so... Um, I haven't... Let's see, I should probably just do this. Save image. I should just have this ready to go. I should put this onto my SSD so I can do backlight bleed testing with every laptop I do. We're making my live streams better right now. All right. Now we have an all black display. Let's see what the blacklight bleed is like. Um, probably need to darken the environment. Turn this off too. Okay, so now we can see it pretty well. Um, there is very minimal blacklight bleed on this unit. A little bit up here. At least to my eyes. That's that's a very good backlight bleed panel. Uh, Lance, you got lucky, man. Very little backlight bleed on your unit. Uh, I, I expect that to vary a lot from uh, laptop to laptop. So, um, so now we're gonna do Cyberpunk. I'm, cur I'm curious, the main thing I want to find out in Cyberpunk is uh, the performance that you can expect for a 4090 versus a 4080 with ray tracing enabled and frame generation on and then with those off and like for the different levels. Oh, I want to see that 23K. Oh, it's not going to go to 23K in Time Spy. But uh, yeah, we should do Time Spy. You're totally right. I totally forgot about Time Spy. But let's finish this out since we're already in it. Uh, so we're doing DLSS on quality. We're going to do frame generation. We're doing ray tracing on ultra. 
Shabam. All right. Let's see what we got. I got to put on a special costume for Cyberpunk. Yeah, what is this? I've got a uh, Hogwarts robe for Cyberpunk. Okay, how are we doing? We're pulling that one, we're pulling that 260 watts again. 270. 265. Dang. Just pretty consistently hitting that high. We were seeing those kind of uh, performance pulls, uh, watt pulls, in, um, in Cyberpunk on the Strix G18. And the Alienware M16. Both of them were going up to about 260. But this is passing 270. 270. Almost 280 there. 270 something. Like 275. Moments. Going up to 275. That's crazy. So average FPS is 136. Um, let me look up. We got to look up what the Strix. And What's up and welcome back to another live. But um, maybe look up some detailed reviews. Okay, so uh, wow, whoo, interesting. Let me show you. So right here we have the results for the Strix G18 on the left, 102, and the Alienware M16 on the right, 101. And right here we got 136.3. So we're talking about a 36 percent bump in FPS for the RTX 4090. That is much, much more than I anticipated. Wow. What do you think, chat? Is that not insane? Um, I am... I am shocked. I mean, it's basically the same power limits, 36% more FPS. That's with frame generation. Maybe the 4090 is able to put out a higher percentage of gains versus a 4080 because of the architecture of the 4090 and the new technology. It just does better with frame generation on. Let's see the performance gains with no frame generation in the mix. Just DLSS on quality. Everything else is on ultra. Here we go. Steven says, wow. Apollo says, bonkers. Time to return the G18 for the scar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if a 36% gain is there, you're, it's, it's pretty worth the $1,400 increase. Because that's about, a, that's not quite, well, I guess not technically. It's like a 60% a increase to price and only 36% more performance. But still, I don't know. All right, so I'm going to pull up the, uh, I'm going to try to find the performance level. No frame generation. So with no frame generation, the 4080 got 62 here. All right. Interesting. So I'm seeing 70s. I'm also seeing some 60s. So the gains without frame generation are going to be smaller, quite clearly. Um, hmm. So it depends on if you're planning on gaming with frame generation enabled. That might make a big difference on uh, which laptop you're, you're planning to get. So we got 69.8 and... As you can see, the Alienware M16 and G Strix G18 got 62.4 and 62.2. So only about a 
seven and a half frame gain in here. So that's about 11% performance gain. Um, that's still respectable-ish. That's what I was kind of more expecting, honestly, for this, this 4090 versus the same 4090, uh, 4080. Because this in Time Spy is only about a 10, 15% gain in performance in Time Spy. Uh, let's try no DLSS, just raw performance. I don't have that number to compare right over here, but um, we'll still be able to see what the raw is. And if you want to look it up, I did test the raw on, uh, on these as well. So you can go check out, uh, check back and forth. I'm anticipating the same about 10% performance gain and so that's this is raw plus ray tracing so raw technically would be no ray tracing but someone else pointed that in the comment um and that's true okay so ray tracing everything ultra no dlss no frame generation what are we gonna get does a scar 18 fit in my backpack yes it does just perfectly um but uh, you're gonna need a large backpack. Definitely, you're gonna need a large backpack if you want to fit the uh, the Scar 18 or Strix G18 for that matter. Same same exact chassis size. The thing about the GT77 is that uh, it's just deeper, and not all backpacks can go as wide for the laptop slot. A lot of them can go this tall, but it, it, there's a limit to the depth for some backpacks, and that's the key. Lance says, it's basically the same size as my wife's Alienware 17 width and length. Yeah, that's probably true. Steven says, time to return the G18 for the scar. That's, that's yeah, you, I know I said that already, I know I reacted to that, but it's just funny. I'm just like, I can understand that. If you have the money to go for the Scar 18, I think I would go for the Scar 18 if you have the money. But if you don't have the money, you want to save money, I think the Strix G18 is still excellent. All right, average FPS was 40. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was closer to 34 or 33 or something. Um, man, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. What did we get in the Strix... G18. Let's go like that. And here's the benchmarks. If you didn't see my benchmark I'm battle, you should check it out. Uh, so did I do this test? I don't know that I did this test. It's not showing up here, at least as an option. Huh. Okay, well, we don't have, we don't have a number to compare that with. I thought I did. Maybe only for the Alienware. Let me check the Alienware. Uh, M18, or M16 benchmark. What's up and... Uh, so... Wait, where is Cyberpunk? There it is. Uh, we didn't uh, we didn't break apart the different moments in this, or the scar eighteen is PS and raw raster. So that got 35.8. So only about a four FPS gain, which is about eleven percent again. So um, so that's probably what you should expect. I would think from the forty ninety in general is about eleven percent. Uh, between the Strix G18 and Scar 18, but then when frame generation and DLSS are at play, especially frame generation, 36% gain. Whew. That's huge. Um, all right, it's time for Time Spy. It's, it's, the, it's the spy time. What's the difference between a laptop 4080 and 4090? Um, 
in terms of what? Like the it has more CUDA cores, I think more memory bandwidth. It's got uh, the same to overall TDP. It's got uh, more VRAM. And uh, all of those things, I think, does add up to a compelling upgrade for the 4090. I just, I'm more mad at NVIDIA that they didn't put 16 gigs of VRAM on the 4080. I mean, the 3080 had 16 gigs of VRAM for years now. And we're downgrading the 4080 down to 12. Why? Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I hope that the 4080 Ti version next year will have a 16. So, let's see what we get in Time Spy. Flat stick, you canceled your Scar 16 and flopped on the Legion Pro 7i. You're going to go for that uh, lower quality display, huh? The plastic touchpad really do it for you, flat stick? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think the, uh, the I, I still think the Legion Pro 7i is going to be a good machine overall. Yeah, don't rub it in. <laughs> I wish with the Pro 7i they had put a full size SD card slot instead of the uh, one of those USB A's. Right? I mean, that, that would make sense. Oh, that would have been awesome. Okay, time spy. Here we go. All right, so uh, manual fan mode, running time spy. We'll probably switch over to turbo mode and see what we get with turbo mode too. Um, notice that we're bouncing up to 175 watts. That's good. We're occasionally falling below it as we get you know, CPU bound or there's less demand. But for the most part, 173, 174, 175 watts. Uh, pretty much nonstop right now. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Any coil whine or static noise? I will... Uh, I cannot hear any coil whine or static noise... Um, at all right now. And I haven't heard it at all because I've been running the, this laptop in manual fan mode. The fans mask over the coil wind noise. Um, but when we switch to turbo mode and we try running time spy, we'll do the coil wind test. Does this, does this SCAR 18 have coil wind or not? Um, we'll find out. Coil wind varies from unit to unit. Um, yeah, coil wine varies from unit to unit, but, uh, I would say that the VRMs that Asus put into the Strix series, a lot of them have coil wine. So I would expect coil wine most likely, at least based on all the information I'm finding and user reviews and other reviewers reviews, a lot of them have mentioned coil wine. So... Sweet. I mean, this is putting up good performance. It's interesting that the 4090 uh, operates at a lower clock speed. You know, it's got more CUDA cores, so it doesn't have to ramp the clock as high uh, to push out more performance. The only place I see the Strix 18 at, is at Best Buy, and it's sold out. Yeah. As far as I know, that's the only place to buy it unless you're buying from some other third-party reseller or something. Um, but it's probably delayed shipping on those resellers too, most likely. There might be scalper listings on like Newegg or Amazon, but uh, we removed some of those scalper listings off the list because um, we don't. I don't really want to promote scalpers selling laptops at upscale prices, so I'm not going to support that with my list. I'm only going to list laptops that are within like say $200 of the price point um, that it's supposed to be sold at. Um, unless there's significant changes on the inside, like additional RAM or SSD space and stuff like that uh, for different configurations. So let's see what we get. I'm guessing around 21 and a half or something, a little over 21. 
Yeah, so 20,559 20, for our overall score, but the one I care about is this one, which is 21,598, which is what I'm expecting because this is uh, this is around the score you should expect. This might be a little bit higher because in manual mode we have this slight overclock being applied. Um, you're probably going to get closer to 21,000 out of the box. Now, uh, if we were to overclock it further, um, let's say we were to push the overclock, say, to 250 and our memory clock up to like 1,100 or 1,000 or something, I think we might be able to bust 22,000 maybe, somewhere in that range at the high end of an overclock. Um, let's try setting it to turbo fan mode and seeing the performance. Are you leaving? Uh... Okay. Um, all right. So, turbo fan mode is engaged. Let's let the fans wind down. All right. And I'm going to try to listen for coil whine and any other noises. All right, letting it, I'm trying to let it fully wind down here so we get the full sound acoustics going. What's your favorite backpack for large laptops? Uh, it's a great question, Genesis. Maybe I should make a video about it, um, but I bought this backpack. I bought this backpack from Best Buy. It's a Targus laptop bag and it could fit my it can fit my GT72 or whatever. I've had that backpack for a bunch of years. It could fit the biggest behemoth laptops in it, basically. And uh, I like I can I can carry like two laptops in it pretty consistently. Like I, yesterday, I did that. I had my Legion 7i uh, in it and the Razer Blade 16 both inside the same backpack. But uh, that's not the one that the GT77 can't fit in. It's my film bag. <clears throat> this is the bag that the GT77 won't fit in. This has a 12, a 12 inch depth requirement to be able to do it. Um, all right, so. Here we are. We're going to Time Spy. We're going to run this bad boy. And we're going to listen for coil wine. I'm going to put the mic down next to the keyboard. All right. So if there's coil wine, you should be able to hear it. Here we go. Coil, coil wine test begin. The room is so quiet now. You see the mic? I have it down here. I don't hear anything yet. The, ha the test hasn't started yet, though. So we'll be hearing it pretty soon.
So almost no coil whine. I don't hear it. There's maybe a tiny, maybe a tiny little bit, maybe. Maybe. But that's the kind of th- I mean, I'm in a completely quiet room now. Um, and it, it, it was a barely audible, maybe a tiny little bit of coil whine um, to me, to my ears. Um, did you guys hear it at all? Do I agree 20K is low? Well, this got 21.6K on the TimeSpy GPU score, which that's what I care about. I don't care about the, the overall combined score. Whole W asks, uh, do this and this G16 SCAR. So it's the SCAR 16 is the name of that laptop. Um, do they perform the same? They're supposed to have the same performance. Oh, notice that we're pulling over 175 watts on the GPU. It was like pulling 177 for like, five, six seconds in a row. That's interesting. Um, our clock speeds don't appear to be going as high though, because in manual mode, we were applying a, a 150 clock overclock or whatever during these last tests. So, um, and that included in the last, so this is gonna be basically the, the correct stock out of the box scoring. Oh, my dad says I got two packages in. Sweet. So I should have uh, the Blade 18 maybe just came, or maybe the GT77 just came. I don't know. I'm, I'm stoked that there's basically no coil wine on this SCAR 18. I love that. Um, I'm surprised, honestly. Uh, the CPU score was also a little higher. Yeah, we were getting, uh, we broke 16K with the CPU score in that last time spy test, and uh, it, was, it was impressive. Um, I think in the Strix G18, we were getting like 15 and a half or something. Uh, Harvey Spectre asks, are you able to install more RAM on the Strix 18? The stock 16 gigs, I don't think is enough. Yeah, you can, I believe. Uh, you can go up to uh, probably 64, I think. No problem. All right, so we got 20... 986, so basically 21,000 out of the box stock. No, no overclocking at all over uh, whatsoever. The fan noise is also much uh, more minimal. The, uh, yeah, I keep getting message notifications. It's funny. Uh, how loud is it now compared to manual mode? Oh, it is much quieter now in turbo mode. And this is a turbo mode you can totally use because there's no coil wind like the Strix G18 that I had. So uh, that, it's going to vary from unit to unit, though. Like what Stephen Onashi said, it's it, each each unit will be different, right? Uh, so I want to mention here uh, before we end the live stream that you can join a membership now for the channel. I believe I don't think there's any members. The first members to join are going to start getting, uh, you're going to get eligible to be added to a wait list. Okay. So, and I'm gonna give you a shout out whenever anyone joins, uh, the channel membership and, uh, you'll eventually maybe get other perks right now. But, uh, for now, the main benefits are going to be a shout out and then added being added to the laptop reviewer resale list. And then, and I've explained that a couple times this stream already, so I'm not going to explain it again. Um, so go back if you want to hear an explanation of what that is. And I'll probably make a dedicated video on that. But, um, okay, so my impressions of the, the SCAR 18 versus the G18. Wow, the level of performance gain in frame generation games at 36% increase in Cyberpunk was really impressive. Uh, only 11% FPS gain for non-frame generation uh, game gameplay basically so a smaller gain for typical games but i think frame generation is going to be included in a ton of games going forward um so i think you're realistically going to be looking at that 36 percent gain being what most people are going to use except in esports titles you're not going to use frame generation um if you have any questions chat please feel free to ask them and i will try to be checking uh chat right now the g14 has an amazing price yeah so the g14 
I think if you're on a budget, just stick to the G4, uh, the G18, I mean. Uh, the G18's much better bang for the buck, uh, even when considering frame generation titles. But um, generally speaking, frame generation titles are going to be a bigger performance game with the 4090 than anticipated for me. Um, and this is with a weaker 4090, right? If, if you're talking about the MSI GT77 or the XMG Neo, I'm expecting more like a 20% gain in normal games and maybe like maybe like a 40% gain in frame generation games. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. In Hogwarts, uh, I believe we had... I have to double check the numbers. I don't want to say them off the top of my head, but I thought it was like a 30, 25 to 30 FPS gain with frame generation and DLSS enabled. So, um, and that was like 150 versus 175 or something. So that was not as big of a difference either. So it's going to vary from game to game. That's still like a 20% gain, isn't it? So, or not quite. It's like 18 or something. It's still, it's still a noticeable gain for the, the 4090. And um, the speakers on the SCAR 18 are massively better than the Strix G18. That's arguably one of the other biggest reasons to go with the SCAR 18. And then the RGB implementation is better. Uh, but that's a minor reason. I don't think that's a really important reason. I think more importantly, you've got uh, the 16 gigs of VRAM in the RTX 4090. And then, and then the, uh, the frame generation performance boost with the increased CUDA cores, probably a little bit faster video rendering times and stuff like that with the um, with the 4090 because it has more CUDAs, more CUDA cores. Um, so for certain applications, you're going to get performance boosts as well. Um, not massively so, probably more like the 10, 11% range, like what we got with the 4080 versus 4090 in typical gameplay. But uh, okay. Checking chat for questions. Uh, yeah, Clark Kent, there is no G18 Strix 4090. Uh, the SCAR is the only word. If you want to get a 4090, you have to go with the SCAR, um, which is $1,400 more. It's a big increase in price to make the jump. Like I said, if you're on a budget, probably not worth it. If you're not on a budget and you just want the best laptop, then it's probably worth it. So it's like if I was spending my money, I would get the SCAR 18. I want the better speakers. I want the uh, most performance I can get. Um, and the SCAR 18 definitely checks those two boxes pretty well for me. Um, so, you know, about a 3,000 score increase between TimeSpy and and uh, like 2,500 to 3,000 or 3,500, depending on which fan profiles you're testing against. And uh, it's not a massive difference in performance, but but yeah, the speaker quality is huge, especially if you're planning to play games in uh, like your hotel room or whatever with just the onboard audio, no headphones. That makes a big difference for the SCAR 18. It's gonna be a better audio experience. And then... Yeah, but but I think the Strix G18 is still fantastic, minus the coil line that's on my unit that I for the review unit. But yeah, okay. I think that's I think that's good enough going back and forth between Strix G18 and Scar 18 for this uh, live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the detailed stuff. We're gonna do more benchmarks on the Scar 18 uh, probably tomorrow. I've got a bunch of games downloaded. We've got Apex Legends, CS:GO. Uh, Dead Space, God of War, Flight Simulator, Red Dead Redemption, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rainbow Six Siege, The Witcher 3. We got a lot of games we're going to be testing, I believe, tomorrow. That's the plan. We'll see if it all works out. But uh, tomorrow afternoon, this is my plan to live stream that. If you want to see the results for all those gameplay benchmarks or check the VOD afterwards. Yeah. Okay, can't wait to see you review the GE78HX4090. Yeah, I'm really excited about that too because... That's definitely my top three laptops to potentially keep. I think it's mainly Blade 18, GE 78HX, and the SCAR 18. I think those are the three that I'm personally considering. The biggest question for me for the Blade 18 is how hot does the wrist rest get? And then the other big questions are what's the performance like on the GE 78? 
HX because it's a smaller overall profile versus the GT77. Um, and then I don't think I would keep an Alienware M16, but it's actually one I would consider. The Maybe even Alienware M18, but I would want a 4090 in it. That's the thing. I would want a 4090. So, uh, and they don't offer that right now. So that's kind of off the table, at least for if I were to buy the laptop and keep it right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah. You thinking it's still a good laptop, even though it doesn't have G-Sync and all that? I don't really value G-Sync almost at all because when you're playing at high frames, G-Sync doesn't really help. If you play at low frames, like you're pushing 30 to 50 FPS in a game, G-Sync really helps prevent stuttering or like um, frame breaking. But when you're doing really high FPS, like you're doing pushing 150 FPS like in Hogwarts, like I am in this laptop, G-Sync is pretty much irrelevant. Um, if you're trying to play with no DLSS, no frame generation, raw rasterization, and you're playing really difficult to render games and you're only getting 30 to 50 FPS, that's where G-Sync can, can matter a lot more. Um, so yeah, that's my take on, that's my take on the G-Sync issue. Um, it's, yeah. And if you don't have G-Sync, you use V-Sync, which is adds delay. But if it's a casual game, it's not really that big a deal. So yeah, it doesn't have advanced Optimus. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have advanced Optimus, but you got to remember, um, it has a MUX switch still, so you can still get the maximum performance. And I pretty much just keep my laptop in max performance mode 95% of the time and occasionally switch it over to like when I know I'm gonna need battery. But uh, for the most part, I don't really need battery that often because I'm almost always plugged into the wall or right near the wall outlet. So, so I would just keep it in MUX switch enabled mode to get full performance if I kept the GE78. Um, and that is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio laptop too, but it's 17 inch display. Uh, yeah. Yep. So anyway, those are my thoughts right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. That's it. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out.